crafty friends my name's Sarah Arseniega and today I will be making a two-page scrapbook layout so I'm going to be using the make it from your heart volume 6 and this is actually a collaboration where a bunch of other crafty friends will be using the same starting place and we will create pages and they all look a little different but we all start from the same place you can find links to their videos in the description box down below so this page will be all about my daughter and her love of singing. This layout is packed with pictures. There are three by fours, three by threes, and two by twos. And so I cut my pictures down into the three by four sizes as well as the three by three sizes. Um, however, I actually trimmed a little extra off because I decided I wanted to back them with white cardstock. So these pictures start actually when my daughter was just a toddler. Um, we were at the library during story time and she just loved to sing and they go all through out her life and until recent times where she's been in choirs and musicals and so uh, this last column here though with the two by two squares i'm going to eliminate that column i will be doing another column with more three by fours and three by threes and then i will spill into the right page and make even more spots for pictures so my background paper will be Glacier. I've cut this down by an inch, and so there will be a half inch border at the top and the bottom. And then once I get the other page on, you'll see that I will have a small border on my left. And then on the right, um, I will have a place for a, a title is actually what I am going to be doing there. This is cut a little different than it is in the sketchbook. and. The reason that is is because they had um, a skinnier border in some places and a wider border in some places and I just preferred to make mine look the same. So I actually pulled out the Evergreen collection from Close to My Heart and I had some music paper um, that I actually ended up not using because it has a French vanilla base and I primarily using white. But they did have these black and white border stickers on the bottom of the sticker sheet. So I cut that down a little bit so it would be the same size as my Glacier cardstock. And right now I'm just dry fitting it, but the backing's still on the sticker. But I do like the way it looks and it will eventually peel those off and put one on each side. Um, so you can see that I have my placeholders and now I'm putting my pictures there. I do try to keep these in chronological order. Um, it's not perfect just because the bigger pictures are down at the bottom and so they would you know, be in different spots if I was truly going in chronological order. Um, but basically it's close enough. The left page is when she's younger, the right page is when she's a little older. I was also somewhat strategic as I placed my pictures uh, because I'm going to be doing some journaling spots and so I didn't want those all together. I end up with basically two diagonal lines of journaling spots with the bulk of the pictures going down like one diagonal line. So now I'm going to turn my attention to the title spot. Um, I am going to bring in some black lettering that I did on my Cricut. It's in a script font and it reads, let your heart sing. And my plan is to use the musical icons from the stamp set and place it around there. However, I knew I wanted kind of something in the background, some kind of background design. And so I'm trying a new to me technique today. Um, I hadn't ever done this until last night when I decided to try it out. So this is what I did last night. This is using the Stampin' Up! Friendly Thins uh, set. And I just wanted some water and so I took Journey ink and I smushed the ink on it with the packaging. And it was such a fun look and I enjoyed doing it. Um, I don't go do a lot of mixed media and that's kind of what this feels like. Um, but it was actually really fun. I really enjoyed it. So I decided I would repeat it today on this page. So I'm going to start by um, basically smashing my ink pad. That, that will get some ink right there in the tray of my ink pad. Some people like to spritz this with some water, which is fine. I wanted the intensity of the darker ink. Just Glacier is kind of a lighter color to begin with. And so I did not spritz mine with water. But you can do that. It makes the ink go further. Um, but I opted for, like I said, the intensity of the ink. And so basically I just got the packaging and you 
you know, pick up the ink and put it on the paper. Uh, you don't get anything that looks the same twice, um, but that's part of the fun of this. And so I'm going to go ahead and keep doing that until I get the coverage that I like. I kind of do two different kinds of motions, one where I'm just kind of like rubbing it on and then I kind of do some pouncing as well. Um, when I did this last night, I actually ended up kind of, I started getting fingerprints almost, like where you could see where my fingers were going down on the paper, and so I did have to watch out for that. Uh, but it's one of those things you kind of figure it out as you go. So my daughter, as a young child, had absolutely no stage fright. Um, she actually tried out for the little school talent show as a kindergartner. Um, which I was supportive of, but also try to like prep her like, well, you might not make it because they'll probably pick the older kids. Um, but she's just always loved the stage and wasn't even phased when like during the audition, her music didn't work and she just went ahead and sang acapella, like no big deal. And so she just has just always loved performing. Um, but what I'm doing here is I've brought in the negative space from my Cricut cut and I'm using my Barely Art Precision Glue and I'm going to put it um, just in the negative space and that allows me to get it straight and um, it's a, just a nice trick I've picked up recently. And I did want pull up every time too though because I wanted to make sure that the negative space wasn't getting glued accidentally to the page. So every time I set something down I kind of lift it up on the negative space as well. I actually just bought a pair of craft tweezers for the first time, um, but I'm still not in the practice of pulling them out. Like this would have been a nice thing to pull them out for, <laughs> um, but I, I'll get used to using those one day. And now I'm ready to do some stamping. The stamp set had this large heart and I thought it was fitting to bring that in since the title is Let Your Heart Sing. As I do these hearts as well as the icons, I um, kind of tend to do them in groups of three. Um, and then once I'm done with that, I do break that rule and kind of fill in with the rest of the spots. So most often I do pages that, you know, document one event, but this is kind of fun every once in a while to do a page that uh, spans time and tells the story over time. And, you know, it gives you a chance to get a little reflective on events and different things like that. Um, one thing to note, I put the bottom picture on the right page, or excuse me, the left page. Um, that is when she was in fifth grade at the talent show, actually at a different school. But she um, it was during COVID. And so if you look at that picture, she has her mask on, but it's like taken down like around her neck. And so I just think that's an interesting thing to document, right? Those were different times we lived in then. One thing I did kind of struggle with was the bulk of the page has that margin at the top and the bottom. And so over in the border area, um, I wasn't sure if I should keep that border or if I should like break into that space. And so I end up actually breaking into the space. You can see that like the bottom heart goes below um, and then I almost felt like I had to do it up at the top just for some balance. Um, but I kind of wonder if it would have looked better had I just kept that margin there. What do you think? Do you think it makes a difference? So I continue stamping with the little musical icons until I find that balance that I'm happy with. Um, stamping's interesting because like with other embellishments, you could move them around a little easier. And because I'm stamping directly on the page, like I, you know, don't actually love the placement of my top part, but I can scoot it over. But with the smaller stamps, I could, like I said, find the balance. So here I'm moving on. I have the journaling done. And so I've brought that in and there's a really cute little musical staff um, that is about the size of the journaling card. And so I'm going to bring that in and fill in the spaces um, that I strategically left for it. And so I'm showing where I'm going to go ahead and stamp those, but I'm going to turn my VersaMat over and use that as my stamping platform. While I finish stamping, I thought I would take the opportunity to invite you to go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I usually try to post a video a week. Um, life sometimes gets in the way of that, but um, that's kind of always my goal. And if you could too, um, I would love a thumbs up from you or a comment. Um, it lets me know 
that you're out there watching this and I appreciate that so much. I am so grateful for your support. So for journaling, it seems like I always have too much to say. I'm always like cramming my words onto the page, um, but I enjoy that too. That's, that's one of the reasons I scrapbook. Um, but I'm curious, are you a big journaler or do you um, not really enjoy that part? But what I've done now is I've brought in some little uh, embellishments that I've made. I use this cute little banner. It comes from the Nestled Essential Dies from Stampin' Up! And I used the smallest one and it was like the perfect size for one of the little stamps on the musical stamp set. And it says loving and I just, I loved each of these moments and so I thought it was fitting. And so here it's kind of be like an anchor for the smaller embellishments. Um, and I like that that little old fashioned radio um, is next to her picture. That's when she was an orphan in Annie, um, which the radio in like the 1930s with the big old fashioned microphone. Kind of makes sense for that picture and then i have a little musical stand and then a pair of headphones um, i'm placing that next to a picture it's actually not my daughter's favorite picture of herself but um i love it's i love it because it captures life like i actually took it during week in the life when i was capturing like everyday moments and she's unloading the dishwasher and just rocking out to some music and singing her heart out and that is very normal around here she just loves to sing and like I said, I just love that I captured that everyday moment. Um, I did make some other little banners and just put the little icons on them and flipped them the other way. Um, they are really cute, um, but I've I decided to just keep this page simple with the three little clusters. There's already a lot of pictures going on and there's already the title that's pretty busy. And so I opted to just kind of take it easy there. Um, I'm just showing though that that could actually make a really cute banner, you know, add some colored paper in between and it could be a really cute banner. So I'll have to remember that for another page layout idea. I've just swapped out some headphones, but that's going to finish this page up. Thanks so much for spending some time with me as I put this together and I appreciate your support. If you'd like, there's going to be some videos that are linked for some more scrapbooking inspiration and I hope you have a great day. Thanks. Bye.